Hello and welcome to Majorwood Studios. I'm Ryan Greenwood and welcome. So this is part two of our 3D modeling uh, tutorial live stream, if you like. Um, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and condense all these and keep these a little bit more snappy. I realized the last one uh, went on quite a long time. Um, if you're new to our channel, we do short films, web series, and behind the scenes sort of tips and tricks like this video. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, um, like and comment. I'm always, I'm always happy to hear what you guys think, uh, any suggestions or anything like that. Okay, so without further ado, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so, so here we are. Um, this is a little bit different from how we left it last time. Um, I'm just gonna get my other screen set up um, to help me out a little bit more. Just bear with me two seconds. Okay. Right. So, um, yes, I have done uh, a little bit of modeling to this just to sort of jump ahead a little bit and get us a little bit in front. Nothing too taxing and everything that sort of fit with the principles that we were talking about in the last episode. Um, what I did do is I did finish the door, which I'm going to zoom in and let you see now. So here we go. So what I've done is I've put like, this door frame on the back there with an airlock. And what I've done with the airlock, which don't worry, I know that it looks like I've, I've jumped really far ahead with this. But everything that I've done here, you will be able to mimic uh, with some of the techniques I'm going to talk about. Uh, in this episode and future episodes. So um, don't worry if, you, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, that looks nothing like why we left it. How do I get it from what it was to what it looks like now? Um, don't worry. Um, I'm sure that you'll be able to apply a lot of techniques that we talk about onto this. Uh, because if we have a look at the, the door here, and we go into this little triangle just over there, um, I've set up some shape keys so we can actually animate the door opening and closing. There we go, it's pretty cool, isn't it? And also with the steps here, I've put the, the little handle on and the steps and whatnot, and because this is the door, um, we can close this. So we obviously just have to animate the exposition if we want to open and close the door. Um, we know that when it's open, it's 150 degrees, and when it's closed, it's zero degrees. So that's what it looks like when it's all closed up. I've got these these little um, cutouts in the floor here so that the the handrail can fit into the floor. Uh, and it all, I like to do things like this just so that, it's, I think it's more believable. If um, the stuff that you're modeling works, then that's a bonus because that will just add to the realism. Obviously, sometimes, like we're going to show you in a moment, with the door, uh, the front door, the big basking door, on, or the grill. Um, sometimes it's not always practical, practicable to um, to do that. But uh, that's scale, that scale, where possible, it's always it's always a good idea to do that. If we go back out to full ship. Let me have a look. When we zoom in, you can see that I've put it in. So these little triangle bits that you saw before, um, they're the bits where, where it actually attaches to the hole. So the other the other bits, the, the sort of top of the handrail, obviously is inside the hole when it's closed up. Um, and you've got your grill floor and your door just there. Now, another thing that I've done, which this is really just, uh, nobody's ever going to really see inside the ship per se, um, but another thing that I've done is I've actually modeled, so when that opens, you can't really tell from this image, but uh, from this angle, oh yeah, there you go. So there's actually like a little corridor in there. And then if we, let's close that. So if we zoom out and I go into wireframe mode, you can see that there's actually some rooms inside. So this is the corridor. So you're coming through the airlock, come down the corridor. This shaft 
here or at both sides it's it, because we've got the mirror modifier on everything is uh, in symmetry so there's another door at the other side um, another airlock and there's a corridor a lift shaft that takes you up to the higher decks um, another corridor a couple of rooms either side of the cockpit and then down into the cockpit area where the um, where obviously the pilot sits and he's going to have the stations and stuff around the way. So I'm not actually going to model the inside of the ship, but I did want to put this in just because um, we're going to be modeling the inside of the actual skip area, the main area. I mean, if you didn't watch, um, if you haven't seen episode one, basically this ship is like a salvage ship and uh, this area here is basically like a giant skip so um this grill or up here this is what we're creating so this grill actually is like a roller door it rolls up the ship flies through debris fields and basically collects all sorts of debris and salvages it uh, there's also a door on the back here and this is basically where it empties everything out so from this door to this door there's basically just empty space through there and um, so I wanted to model, um, sorry, wrong button. So I wanted to model these internal bits just so that I knew that there was enough space. Again, just to have that little bit of realism, you want to make sure that there's definitely space inside for people to move around. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to select the front door here, yeah, the front grill, and I'm going to press Shift. D, which will duplicate it um, and I'm going to leave it in place for now because what I do want to do is I want this to roll from the bottom all the way to the top and it's kind of the idea is that it rolls up and it lays across the ceiling here um, I'm not going to actually make it do that because you won't be able to see it ever do that but um, just want to make sure that it fits. So I'm going to rotate, press R and X, and minus 90. I'm just going to grab Z, G, Z, G, Y, just make sure that it fits in the space that I want it to, and there's plenty of room. That's the back door, so yes, yeah, so it's got plenty of room. Okay, so I'm just going to Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, right back. Um, now, what I'm going to do with this duplication is I'm just I'm going to grab Y and move it out of the way for now. Um, so I'm going to want that, but not yet. I'm also going to do that with the back door as well. Everything that makes up the back door. Shift D. Grab Y. Oops. Oh, um, okay, so yeah, so basically all I've done with this is just shaped it down a bit. It was it was much more it was a it was a lot square before, and, and the back end here where the engines go, it was just a flat right angle. Um, so all I've done is like like you saw in the other tutorial, or if you didn't watch the other tutorials, I've just had ring loops with Control R, and I've just pulled the edges up and down so that it gives me the shape that I want and for the back engine here I've just extruded out don't like extruded in sorry um, and the same with the back door I don't know if we have those around around the door area I've just extruded out um, it's like a ridge that sort of shows, shows you where the door is and that's sort of what you're gonna be like what the door is. Um, <clears throat> build this bit up and I've just put another man on top just so that make sure that uh, this area is big enough because if you look on the on the reference shot here, there is actually like a little cabin there, and that's the the idea of that is that uh, the crane arm that's going to be sort of here is kind of operated by the guy that sits here, so I needed that to be big enough to fit a person in. So other than that, there's not really there's not a great deal of of modelling that's been done, and it, like I said, it all fits to the fundamentals of what we learned in part one. So let's let's go ahead. Let's grab this. We're grabbing the front again, but this time I'm going to go view right and press C to see the wireframe mode. I think there is a way of showing keys actually. 
Sumo. I'm not going to I'm not going to stand the computer before is anyway. I'll figure that out for next time. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so view right, and then we're going to press E to extrude, and we're going to pull it this way. And we're going to basically pull it all the way back to here. And this is another reason why I wanted to put all these rooms in. So I want to make sure that that doesn't actually touch anywhere. So if we go back into it, you can see that it does slightly touch there. I think that is because those rooms actually look like they're pointing up slightly, but that's because of that. So what I'm going to do is view right, and up there, and I'm just going to scale this on the z-axis, S and Z. I'm just going to pull that back actually. Scale Z again. And the touches. There'd be like wall panels and vents and stuff in between there. So extrude again with E and I'm just going to pull it back this way. Go back there. Oh no, whoops. Go back there. Okay, and then rotate with the R against the X axis and I'm going to tilt it so it's almost at the same angle as the door, the back door here. And then I'm going to extrude again with the E, put it down to about there, and this time I'm going to scale it along. So go down here, oh no, cool. Scale, um, normal, like that. I'm just going to scale it back up. Cool. Oh. Let's see and move back to here. You can see that's kind of the shape we're making. And you want to look at this side rather than this side because you can sort of see the lift shaft slightly through there or you can see the cockpit slightly. Uh, again, you can see the lift shaft sort of coming through there as I move around. But if you look at this side, which is the side that doesn't have, that we're not modeling, the, the mirror side, uh, you can see that that doesn't happen, so you're okay. Um, obviously, if you can see it poking out here, then you'll have to alter your model slightly. But we're okay. We've got this sort of shape coming in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete these faces that we've got selected in here. So I'm just going to press X and faces. And then I'm going to grab back door faces. And go back to my right view. Uh, so let's see for wireframe. And again, we're going to extrude it. Turn it back to the middle. Now we can see. Oh, no, so I don't want to know what I'm going to want. So 
sale is eight. We're just trying to get to match this side, really. Rotate it on the x axis. Put it into one of you. I'm assuming you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Rotate it along the x axis again. So now I'm just going to get bigger one. So it's S for scale, Z, scale on the Z axis. G for grab. It's a bit of trial and error, as you can see. Yeah, that's about that. So what I'm going to do now is go back into solid view and delete these faces. Then we're going to edge select mode. I'm going to select well, hold alt and select this edge, then shift and or hold shift and alt and select this edge, then press space bar, and I'm gonna type in here bridge. So there bridge and edge loops. So I'm gonna select that and that's create creating a bridge for us. So now we've got zoom out a little bit to see so we've got a whole shape all the way through. And that's basically our skip area. So it enters in this end and it gets pooped out this end. Oh. That's A to get rid of everything. The unselect on. And then I'm going to Grab this, press L while I'm hovered over it, and I'm going to go back to right view, back to Z select, uh, Y frame mode, sorry. And then I'm going to uh, grab Y, I'm going to move this back into position. And it should be right there. Okay, cool. I'll do the same front. A to unselect all and L to select linked. Grab Y. Do right. Zoom in there. Uh, grab Y again. So now, if we go back to solid view mode, there shouldn't really be any difference from what we started with. Except for obviously when the door's open, you've got a cavern inside. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to edit these doors. <coughs> Uh, I'm going to press one or set one up. I'm going to select this door here as well with the L. Go for those. I'm going to select P by selection, and that's unselected it. So if I press Tab back into object mode and select the doors, I'm going to rename that so I know. And I'm going to call those the skip doors. Actually, I'm going to go one further. So I'm going to call this one um, front skip door. Uh, 
And then I'm going to tab it into edit mode, and I'm actually going to uh, separate this as well. Let's go. Uh, back as in P, and then by selection, tab back out, select just this one, and then this one is obviously the rear skip door. I will always recommend that you label everything, just it makes things a lot easier um, further down the line. It doesn't really matter what you call them. Um, just so long as it's a uh, naming system that you understand. That's when you're looking for it in a bit and you've got loads of other bits. Um, yeah, it's going to be awkward. So, we're on rear skip door. We want, let's start with the front, front skip door. And then I'm going to, as before, just view global and local. And here we are with front skip door. Now I'm going to set the origin to geometry. Uh, oh yes, obviously because it's in no mode, isn't it? So I want to go to modifiers and I want to apply the no modifier. Then I want to set origin to geometry. Cool, and then um, tab into edit mode. What I'm actually going to do is I want to make this into one one plane. So I'm going to select all these um, edges that are inside. Press X and edges. So I've just got the outside edge there. Hold Alt, select that outside edge and then click F for face. And there we go, we've just got one plane um, Edge to work with. I'm also going to go into vertices mode and then all these verts down the side here, except for the top one. I'll zoom in so you can see that a bit better. Um, I can't really see that a bit better. So I'm going to select all these verts down this edge. And then I'm going to Alt M and at last. And basically all I'm doing is I'm um, creating the least amount of verts as possible. So I'm simplifying the, the object really before I then complicate it again. Um, and it's basically just so that you don't have some, you don't run into any issues in a minute and you are trying to make this look like some, like what you want it to look like. You want to start with as simple an object and build from there. Cool. So it's just one, two, three, four, five. Six birds now, but make up that, that one shape. <clears throat> uh, then we're going to go into site and site that, and we're going to subdivide it, which is there it is. A beautiful. I am not going to subdivide it because it doesn't seem to work. Well. Yeah. Maybe not so much like that. Okay, that's not working. Then we'll just go back to. Uh, Old fashioned loop cuts. So we've gone to front view and we'll go control R. Why is this working? Oh, I missed it. 
I don't know why this isn't working, but I'm going to select that and then I'm going to extrude it out so it's got a bit more geometry to work with. And I think the normals have flipped the wrong way. So I'm going to select all, I'll click it here. Uh, go down there to share the movie and recalculate. I'm actually doing normal space in that So, yeah, Let's put one there. Oh. Okay, so we've I've put an edge loop in there. And then I'm just going to crank up the number. Something like that. 25. Oh, and then I'll do the same on this side. So control R. Keep it in the center by cutting twice and then just roll this number up to 25. And what I'm going to do is view the front. And then go back to vertex select, select A to get rid of, and then select everything, and then press K for knife. And I'm just going to knife, cut, sorry, knife cut across into these verts. Make sure that you've got a red square around it before you select and that means that you're connecting vert to vert. Every time you've selected one line, you just hit return or enter, whatever you prefer to call it, and that's your, your one cut. So you have to hit K again. So yeah. And the reason why I'm doing it this way and not just adding the loop cuts to um, the shape that we had before was because um, now at least we know that they're all even because when you put that loop in and you've selected 25 of them you have created an even space between each vert which is what we want because again we're creating this sort of grill look The reason why I don't like select that one and then go back across there is because uh, you'll create extra edges, which I don't want to create. Like I said before, you want it as simple as possible. Because when the model is finally finished, you, you're going to have a lot of a lot of geometry. You're going to have a lot of um, faces, a lot of edges, a lot of verts. And um, for performance-wise, you really want to keep that as low as possible. So um, you want it to look good. You want the detail to be there. 
port. We also try to be economical about the way that we use dirts and edges and faces. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that I can't speed this up. I was hoping that it would just loop bring everything and then this bit would be done then, but uh, it doesn't seem to have to work But as with all, all types of filmmaking, you've just got to be adaptable and work through the issues. And we've only got a few more cuts, cuts now anyway. Okay, so there we go. So we've created the grill. Uh, so we haven't done the. Oh, we have done the inside. Oh, so we've got a face on there. Oh, there's a face. Oh, it's all right. I was looking through it. Let's see if the selection there. Okay, so we're going to edge select. If you select Alt, you should be able to select all that ring, even down the edge. So uh, shift, hold Shift and Alt and select all of these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zoom right in so you can see what we're doing. And we just want to put a little, like chamfer, little bevel. So control B, we pull it out, pull it ever so gently. If you press shift, you can actually Make the income smaller. Okay. And then we go back into face select and you want to select all these front ones, but the larger ones. That's so what we're going to do there is extrude those out and that'll give us the grill look that we are after. And then again, I'm just going to zoom in so I can. So I'm going to this is something to be too drastic. So oops, let's move those on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve them slightly just so that they catch the light a little better. So if we extrude again, and then scale to Z. Wait, sorry. We need to do individual, change this to individual origins and then scale Z. Go to the right thing. Extrude again. Scale Z again. What individual um, origins does is as it sounds, each individual Face that you've got selected is going to uh, deform rather than them deforming as a whole. Uh, and I think I'm happy with that. If we just uh, tab out, see. Yeah, this grill effect, yeah, get all the way out. Let's go around. Uh, so you've got this sort of like garage door front look to it, which is really what I'm going for. So then if we go to 
one by four. There you go. So it's a lot more like this now, isn't it? I'm going to leave the back door. You obviously just repeat the same steps uh, to create the back door. Uh, I'm going to leave the back door and uh, I'll do that off camera um, and just to jump ahead again just to save time because um, I am conscious of these being going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, now move on to, um, I was going to animate that. Yeah, I'll animate that. So with keyframes again, so just so that you get the idea of, of how this works. So if we go back into um, local, global local, into edit mode. And if you click this little triangle here with the verts, you get shape keys down here. So if you select plus, oh wait, you have to do that in the object mode, sorry. And that gives you a basis. Now you can you can call that whatever you want, but basically what it is is this is your starting position. So when you add a keyframe, uh, it basically alters from this, uh, as you saw with the slider earlier. It alters from this to whatever the the next keyframe that you add is um, as an increment. You'll, it'll make more sense in a minute. So I always, if I'm doing doors or anything, like that, I always change this to say closed. You don't have to change it to entirely up to you. Um, and then select a new keyframe, and that's key one, and I want this one to be open. Um, so while you're selected on the open shape key, then go into edit mode. And now whatever you edit here, um, that is your, your shape key. So what we want is we're wanting this to animate up and it, it, it is going to go across the ceiling but I think that it fits into the ceiling so you wouldn't actually see it when it's open so what I'm all I'm going to do really is I'm going to lift it up a little bit and then shrink it all and um, so again if I go into right mode right viewport sorry and I grab Z right, I'm not sorry a for all, grab Z, and I'm going to lift the whole thing up. So, two, one, this guy's there. And then I am going to. I know that those two squares are. Um, I know that those two squares are inside the. Uh, inside the front. So now they're hidden from view. Uh, I'm then going to select wireframe mode, uh, A again. All right, only wireframe mode. Wireframe mode. Uh, B for box select. And because you're in wireframe mode again, you select everything, not just the front faces that you can see. And I'm going to take it from this first box here. I'm going to select everything lower down. In there. And this is going to deform this part of the model quite a lot, but it'll be fine, don't worry. So if we grab Z and lift it up. So it's something that it looks like. So. You back again. Oh, I know what it is, it's because yeah, one solid view. You see, because that's one solid piece, isn't it? So we don't want to set that. So we probably don't have to do this with uh, Come on. B, shift, and B, and show Right. So then we're going to grab Z and lift that up. There. And then again, if you 
front. I'm going to just get rid of this image that's behind us. Uh, just back of the eye. To make that job a little bit easier. A to D select all, B for box select, um, C again. Because I had box selected, I couldn't actually change it to wireframe mode. So change to wireframe mode, then press B for box select. And again, the one box down from the top. Grab all of that. Back into solid view. Deselect this back panel because I don't want this back panel selected. Back to front view and grab Z. And we're going to basically continue doing that until we've got the whole shape up into these top two uh, squares. Um, again, It's re repetitive, but as with most, most things in life, it's just what it is, <laughs> unfortunately. Like this. You're going to get some walking on the back of uh, that panel as well, but again, because you're not going to see it, I'm not too worried about it. If you want to go in and animate this properly and, and make it do the actual movement, um, that's that's entirely up to you. Um, but for me, if you're not going to see it, I'm, I'm as long as it looks right when you when the animation's finished, that's all I'm interested in really. Please, if you've got uh, any any questions or any hints for me, uh, tips, uh, please comment, uh, you know, let's talk, let's uh, get involved. We're nearly there, guys. We're nearly there. And then we'll have this door in a minute. And again, like I say, you just do the same thing with the back door. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that one because there are other things that we can be editing. I wanted this to be a lot shorter, but it seems to be just as long... I'm trying to find the balance between doing stuff off camera and doing stuff on camera. Because the whole point is that you guys learn stuff, but like things like this uh, become quite repetitive. Anyway, there. Okay. 
So I'm about halfway, I'm going to start with the second um, from, from the second square. That target area I want it to be. Oh, good start to that time. Oh, that's because we're under the origin point, that's what we have to worry about. So, two more and it should be done. I'm just going to check. Should be the last portion. Moving towards about the same. So I do actually want those bits where the road set to be selected. Okay, and it's basically tidying up these verts now just to make sure that everything fits into that into that square. Okay. So now when we actually tab back out of this, it automatically defaults to the closed or your basis um, shape key. And then that's because your other shape key, the one you've just been working on, is automatically default to a value of zero. But as you scroll this up, you'll see that it actually pulls up. Well, that well, it doesn't look like it's, uh, it looks like halfway, it's kind of, yeah. Kind of bunched a little too much, hasn't it? So if you go back to go to local, we can see that. Oh no, and that's not what we want. Yes, you can see it now. Okay, so we're just gonna have to, that's fine. Let's just push that back a little bit. Or even pull this forward a little bit. Yeah, so I think we're going to select the main hole. And just pull these two faces forward slightly. That will hide where they sit. Just finding this skip door, then. Where are you? Where'd you go? That's got front skip door, isn't it?
There you go. There you have your opening and closing skip mouth. Cool. And then, like I said, you do the same thing on the back. But you're not going to waste time doing that. What I am going to show you now is um, a panel. So I'm going to make this panel here. Um, and then off camera, I'm going to go and panel the whole thing. But um, this is just a cool way to get some paneling done. So again, I'm going to right view mode. I'm going to select this and go to edit mode. And I'm going to try and find this sort of shape that comes all the way across here. Drops down where the gun is, probably about here where the left area is. Moves back up. Moves a little bit higher. So I'm going to use the center line as the line for it. And this one's a pretty easy one. So basically all you have to do is you, you use your knife or your ring tool to create the shape that you want. So I've created a ring there um, and the one to here as well. This ring we actually want to be two. And Put that one back in, I'm going to bevel it rather than selecting two. And then with the knife tool, let's go for the knife tool, um, I'm just going to select that. Just not an edge there. I don't think there is. I'm just going to lift this one up a little bit. Right, let me just. Back. So if I'm not viewing, it's what it really is actually doing with it. It's the shape I'm going for again. Right view, I'm going to right view so I get these lines horizontal. And then we go into, so if you see now we want these shapes. And then we're actually going to make a, another bit coming in here. Now. Okay.
I just decide if I want it. Okay, so then go into face select, select the shape that you want to be the. What do we want that? So this is the panel that I'm creating, basically this shape here. And then if I just press Shift and D to duplicate that, so I've got to set a bit of that. And then P again, separate it. So it's my P. Then I'm going to go back and set that. And this is going to be my... Um, And all O one. We'll now go to our modifiers list. Uh, we'll apply the mirror. And then if we want to add a solidify. Let's go back to the Local. So it's actually going in the wrong direction. All solidify does is it, it's the same as an extrude, really, but uh, you can control the depth and everything. So if you see, it's actually gone that way. So we want it to go the other direction. Um, so offset minus one. So if we put off that way, then we go back to view. So So there you go, stick it off that side, let's see, stick it off both sides, yeah. There you go. Um, we do want it sticking off a little bit further. I reckon, yeah, let's put 1.5. Oh, maybe that. Is that 15? Oh, that's meters, that's one. Oh, and then if we go to bevel. So we want bevel this edge again. Let's go into local global and then we can see what's happening a little bit clearer. So we're then creating this beveled edge. And I need it. And if we go to bevel this edge again, three segments. Oh, no. That was probably the best. And uh, again, 50 years. So now you've got this nice sort of panelled area. And if we just click uh, another modifier on here, the subsurface modifier. See, it'll smooth, it'll smooth all those out and then you can put smooth face in there. And this is just a nice way, again, of creating some extra detail uh, for your models, for your spaceships especially, and it gives you that sort of panel look. And then, because these are separate panels as well, uh, if there's any sort of like um, major battle or anything like that and you want the panel to break off, uh, you can then go in and you can actually um, now model beneath this some damage and like cables and stuff uh, and you could animate that blowing off and flying away and come towards the camera or whatever and then you've got damage that's beneath that and sort of like in a layer of the ship so yeah so that's basically the easiest quickest way of making a panel like i said i'm going to go in and make all the other panels and uh, and whatnot um So we've made the door, we've animated the door, we've made a panel, which again, like I said, I'm gonna go in and make all the other panels. Um, 
Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now, I think I'm going to make these lights that go on the top. Just click on there. So I'm going to select that one and I'm going to press Shift S and move cursor to selected because wherever the 3D cursor is where you add a new geometry. Shift A to add in a cylinder. And then I'm going to rotate the cylinder along the X axis at 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go in. No, I can't go. So I'm going to scale this along the y axis, grab, scale this, and I'm going to press shift and y, and that means that I'm going to scale it on every axis other than the y axis, so that fits very nicely. I know that's the biggest it can be, the largest diameter we can. I actually want this to be quite, I want this to be a lot smaller actually. So again, scale, shift, y. Finding that um, oops. Okay. <clears throat> so then I'm going to separate that by pressing P again in the selection. <clears throat> grab that and we're going to call these headlights. Uh, it's still got the mirror modifier on, and there's another one over there. Uh, and then I'm going to go view, go for global, tab into edit mode, like this, and we're going to move that back to grab the wire. Really good. Very And I'm going to scale that bit out again. No why. Only a little bit to give yourself a chamfer book. I'm going to view right. I'm going to extrude. Only slightly. I'm going to extrude and I'm going to press return so I don't have to extrude anything, but I've added more geometry. And then I'm going to scale without the Y. And then I'm going to extrude again and along, and that kind of then gives me that like a, a cuff look. And again, I'm going to do that. I'm going to extrude, but not actually extrude. Just press return. And then I'm going to scale without the Y. And then scale. And it's almost like an inset, an inset. Then I'm going to extrude. I'm going to scale this a little bit. You right, screw again, scale, and then create like a dome almost. Screw again and scale again. And this is how you would create a dome. Uh, you just keep extruding and scaling, extruding and scaling until you've got that dome effect. Uh, we're not going to go full dome, we are now just going to extrude out there. Next. So I've got a headlight, that's the back bit, so a bit. Uh, this is going to be our glass now. So if we extrude, scale, but don't actually extrude out now. This time I'm going to extrude in. Again, I'm going to extrude, but not, but just press return and then scale, so I inset it slightly. And then we're going to create another dome for the, for the light. For the glass, I mean, sorry. 
Extrude. I think I might have come out a little bit too far there. So there you go, doing effect. And eventually we are going to make this dome glass and obviously this dome metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift S to cursor to selected, shift A, and I'm going to add in a UV sphere. And I'm going to scale this sphere down because this sphere on the inside is going to have an emission shader on, which is basically going to create the light that we see, and then the glass is obviously going to refract it. So it works. This is essentially the bulb. Um, and we're just going to pop that inside. I can't actually see it, but it is in there. And then I'm going to select all by pressing A. Yeah, press A twice because it was already selected on the UV sphere. So 1A deselect and then another A select. And I'm going to be able to modify now. This may or may not work. So I'm going to go up front. So I'll zoom out so I can see the mirror as well. Because I want to add an array. What? So I want three of these. I could just shift D and move it across. Um, but I can also add an array, which I'll show you. Just another thing, just another tool that you can use. So array, ah, oh, it does work. But it doesn't modify. Okay, so it's not going to work, but basically you get the idea that um, the array basically makes multiple of whatever you select. It doesn't mirror that for some reason. So we are just going to go Shift D and then press X to move our duplication along a little bit. And yeah, we've got some three lights up there, so I'm going to do it again. Shift D. Oh, X. Don't click this X, or you're just moving it in any other direction. There you go. Tab out of that to so get the three headlights. Let's go back into uh, like global mode. And then can actually do this come a little bit further forward, so grab Y. Oh. Just like that. And I'm actually going to move them. Nope, I can't move them all because I'm in edit mode. Like it's just there. If I move them in, um, if I move them on the along the x-axis in object mode, it would have moved all six of them at the same time. Whereas, because uh, you would move, you would have moved the origin. Whereas in this mode, um, if I grab and move along the X, because we're in mirror mode, it moves the objects and not the origin point. Um, so yeah. yeah, cool. So we've got lights, we've got panel, we've got door. Uh, Door is animated, the lights have got bulbs in them. So yeah, and then, like I said, that's just, um, Error now. So I'm going to put the other light down there at the bottom and pan all the rest of it um, off camera. And I'll see you in the next episode. And oh, wait, let me just 
this. So, yeah, I am going to pan on the rest of the ship, put the other lights that are on the, on the side, do the back door, uh, do all that off camera, and then come back and we'll make the gun on the side, which would be pretty fun with the little camera. Um, yep, that, so that'll be able to rotate and then obviously as it fires, it'll spin. Uh, so we'll create that and that'll be our next episode, making the gun. So thumbs up if you liked this video and found it helpful. I hope that you did. Uh, please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing and I will catch you guys in the next video. High five. That doesn't really work quite as well in life, does it? <laughs>